I'm not quite sure what you guys have done, but you seem to have saved Oviedo. Last episode, they performed for you guys, and since then, it's been pretty magical. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to The Real Deal. Today we have got two games for you, slight change of schedule, but it's Real Madrid and Athletic Bilbao in the Spanish Cup, which I falsely said last episode, I think we played Bilbao when it wasn't Bilbao. I don't know why I got so confused about that, but we are playing them now in the Spanish Cup, so I technically I'm right. Since you last year, things have been going very, very nicely indeed. As you can see, we played uh, a Bar Malaga just before the winter break. We had uh, Betis after that. Started off with a 2-0 win, which is pretty good. Salai and Lozano getting the two goals there to make sure we got the three points. So it was good to have a, a big turnaround in form, um, having only got two points from an available 15 in these last few, few league games here. Uh, we then got, what, 13 out of 15 there in these next five league games. So that was pretty nice. We now the winter break, uh, played some team in a friendly 1-6-1, not that important. Uh, we then came straight back and played Seville. Lost 2-1, unfortunately. Uh, Seville were the better side. I think we're lucky to get the goal late on in that game. But uh, Angel Di Maria playing for Seville now, scoring a goal just for half time for them. After that, it was Celta de Vigo that we were playing in the Spanish Cup. Uh, not Bilbao, Bilbao were in the league. But uh, we had a good first leg, a 3-0 win away from home. Uh, Luka Adzic, Rolheiser and Lozano getting the goals in that game, which was good. We then played at Bilbao uh, in the league, not the cup. And away from home, we won 4-2, which was fantastic stuff, I've got to say. Uh, they started off pretty well scoring 2-0. Went from, you know, a 2-0 down to come back and then win it 4-2 was a fantastic result and good performance from the boys. Showed some real character in the words of Brendan Rodgers. So that was good stuff. Uh, and then we have the second leg against Vigo after that, a 2-1 win. So we got safely through into the quarterfinal. I think, I think is where we got last year or did we get the semi-finals last year can't quite remember but I, didn't decide, I decided not to show you the quarterfinals because I think we've been there before and you'd seen it sort of thing after the Vigo game though we had a league game against Granada who was sitting 19th in the table at the time and I think we just got a bit overconfident I don't really know what happened to be honest with you but we lost that game 1-0 um, and they deserved to win it to be honest with you they were the better side they deserved to win it um, so a bit of an off game for us but since then we've won all three games a 1-0 uh, win against Espanyol in the quarterfinals of the Spanish Cup then a 1-0 win against Zaragoza in the league Sunset with the goal in that game and then a 3-0 win away from home against Espanyol. Adzic with two goals and Fibas with the other one to make sure we get into the Spanish Cup semi-finals. This time we're playing Bilbao, so we actually are playing them. Uh, we lost to them last season in the Cup as well, which is very frustrating. But we've had a relatively easy run in the Cup um, so far. We start off with Gironia in the league below us. Then Vigo, who are probably the best team we've played in it so far. Uh, although I don't think they've been massively playing that well. They're below us in the table so far this season, which is all right. Um, Espanyol, again, a team sort of around our level that we can sort of beat. Uh, and then Bilbao, probably a little bit better than us, probably should be beating us. But again, the teams we've played have been either below us or around our sort of level, so we've been kind of lucky. And um, with the semi-final as well, we missed out playing Real Madrid and Barcelona. They play each other in the, the semi-final, so we've been pretty lucky there. Right, that was a long time to get to those results and stuff like that. Uh, what does that mean for the table? Well, it doesn't really mean all that much. We've not really changed too much. We're still sitting 12th in the table. Uh, a win today could take us up to uh, look at it, maybe ninth, eighth, something like that. But we're playing Real Madrid, so it's probably not going to happen. Although we've been in some pretty decent form, I suppose everyone has sort of been in pretty decent form as well by the looks of things. We haven't really changed that much. We've gotten further away from like the relegation zone and things like that. Um, but actually, we're still a, a bit further behind like Valencia and Deportivo La Coruña in those Europa League places. We were like five points behind last episode. Uh, I think today, well, look at this now, right now, we're, we're nine points behind them. A win would take us six points behind them. So we're a little bit further behind them actually. Now there have been transfers, uh, a couple of them actually, if I'm being honest with you. We're looking at signing Trevor Traveller uh, on, a, on a contract at the end of the season actually. He's sort of going on a free and I know he's got some decent potential. Still quite young, so I think he could be all right. We're not too worried about that. Looking on the outs, uh, Ator, our uh, young goalkeeper in the B team, he's been subject to an awful lot of bids, um, especially from Inter Milan. They keep bidding for him. I think Valencia were in there a little bit as well. Um, and then the main guy who's been bidding on is uh, Adriano Peleas, who uh, in the B team this season, doing amazingly well, 11 goals, 14 assists, pretty decent stuff. He's been subject to, uh, it doesn't say there anymore, but it was uh, like Valencia, Vigo, uh, Real Sociedad. They all wanted him basically, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but they've both signed new contracts now, Players and Ator. So hopefully they'll be at the club for quite a while now. In terms of transfers, we have to talk about two outs. The first one, Pedro Pinto, wasn't getting any game time really. How many games did he play this season? 
Uh, ten, okay, 10 games, maybe more than I thought he had played, but it wasn't really a, a first name on the team list. He wanted more regular football, so he's now gone on loan to uh, a team in Portugal. Uh, £775,000 we're getting for that, which is some good money. Um, so that'd be pretty decent. And perhaps a little bit of a surprise, Diego Johansson put in a transfer request because he wasn't getting the football that he really wanted. So he's now gone to Gironia for the rest of the season on loan. On the inside, though, we have brought in two new players. Uh, we had to bring in Helder Diaz. He's a striker that comes in. So we've got another striker now, another option up front. Three-star current ability, five-star potential in from Southampton. Uh, he should be pretty decent. 18 years old as well. Got a long time to improve. Uh, my main reason for bringing him in was because that a young striker with a lot of potential maybe he'll like the club and want to sign with us at some point things like that that's kind of what I'm thinking so that's kind of what I want with Helder Diaz and the same sort of thing with Alexander Burdicke, uh coming in from Bayern Munich again young 18 year old midfielder uh, three star credibility five star potential again if he believes Bayern Munich hopefully will be his first choice club as he has a good experience here or something like that but we needed him because we have more injuries in there's a lot of stuff to talk about this is ridiculous now isn't it but there's a, a lot of stuff to talk about of course Masinovic is still out for another four months potentially uh, and Borja Fernandez had an injury um, he's been out for a few a little while now actually when did he get injured he got injured at the uh, end of December uh, and he's still got another two months to go. So he's been out for a month, still got another two months. So essentially, he's got out for three months. So we've been missing these two guys, basically, which has been a bit annoying. Uh, we needed an extra body in midfield. So uh, Burdicke comes in as that sort of guy that we need in the midfield. Now, we're playing Real Madrid, and you could argue that we've been a little bit risky with this kind of uh, formation stuff, but it's worked pretty well for us recently. Um, this is kind of a team that's been getting the formation and getting the results for us, so I'll stick with it as Burke starts in goal, a uh, back four of Rella, George, Kalatazar, and Acosta. Dorsch comes back into that CDM because he wants more game time. He got a bit cross, wanted it, so he's having it. Fibas and Sunset make up the uh, other midfield players there. Uh, Adzic on the left, Salai on the right because again he was demanding more game time and Rojas is a little bit inconsistent on that right hand side so we thought we'd give him a try on the right hand side of the pitch. And Lozano who's starting to bag a few more goals now is starting up front for us today. Right, kickoff is upon us. It's only nine minutes into this recording. That's ridiculous. Uh, I think some stuff's going to be cut out. Corner comes in for Real Madrid. Isco puts it in and... Uh, We've given away a penalty a minute into the game. That's, that's good going, isn't it? All right, then. Well, Cristiano Ronaldo, who's out of contract at the end of this summer. I've tried to offer him a contract, and he, he just flatly declined it. And actually, if he's going to miss penalties like that, we don't want him. Sergio Ramos, also out of contract at the end of the season. Again, he didn't want to join the club. Uh, they both just said, we're not entering negotiations at all. So, you know, they're missing out, really, because they, they could be part of a, of a fantastic Oviedo side that is going to be coming through and, and, and developing lots of young players. And they could help that. But clearly, they're just too selfish to want to do it. The Real Madrid side, though, is absolutely incredible. Ronaldo just got off injured as well. So he's really, really not in a good time with Oviedo at the moment. Uh, but Pogba's there now. Dybala's there. Uh, Asensio. And they got Donnarumma as well in goal. It's such a good side, Real Madrid. Um, incidentally, the transfer window we just had, uh, a few of you noticed that we played Barcelona last time. Joe Hart was in goal. Um, he played like five games for Barcelona. He's now moved to uh, Gironia. Not Gironia, Genoa in Italy. Um, so he had a few, little season at Barcelona, which is interesting. Salai on the ball then for us. This is the first highlight, I think, coming towards us. And Lozano has been put forward on the ball in behind the defence. His shot, saved by Donnarumma, wasn't going on target, I don't think, anyway. Now, Dorsch has picked up a knock somewhere along the way. We may have to take him off at half-time. Potential foot injury. Don't want to risk him too much. I think we will... Uh, bring someone else on. Maybe Ruiz will come on at uh, the half-time break. But in the meantime, Real Madrid are coming forward. Although a good clearance there is now Lozano is through. He can get a ball. I mean, Adzic was making the run. He just didn't get the ball through to him. And he made a weird ball forward to no one. And now Donnarumma is just toying with the ball. Isco now on the ball. Gets tackled and it's cleared by Acosta. Lozano tries to chase onto it. But uh, wins the ball from Sergio Ramos. In behind the defence, Sergio Ramos has made a mistake which has been very, very costly. And Lozano has just made it 1-0 to Oviedo away from home to Real Madrid. What a game this is taping out to be. Well, I've got to say, that is a uh, a pretty, pretty decent first half. 1-0 up against Real Madrid. Ronaldo's off injured, which is obviously a good thing for us, I've got to say. He missed a penalty as well, of course. It's a good performance. Keep it up, boys. Uh, what we will do, though, is we will take Dorsch off for Ruiz. Uh, just because I don't want to risk him too much. We've not managed to beat Real Madrid yet in uh, the real deal. So today could be a landmark episode if we manage to get the win against Real Madrid. It'd be fine. And we, uh, in fact, I wouldn't really mind losing to, to Bilbao in the cup if it meant that we beat Real Madrid sort of thing. That would be quite cool. At the same time though, 
we're we're one well we're two games away one round away from the final uh, with a potential you know if we get to the final that's a massive potential for us to get Europa League football for next season so uh, Actually, I think I'm probably more inclined to say I want to win the Bilbao game than this one. Maybe I said that too soon because I do want to win this one as well. Although we've got the ball coming forward. Lozano into Fivas. His ball through to Adzic. Not the best as Carabajal uh, plays it back to Donnarumma. Now they can build from the back. Sergio Ramos, who made a mistake earlier, puts it up towards the Alexis Sanchez. George manages to just about clear it out to Acosta and Salai now trying to come forward down the right-hand side of the pitch. Plays it more centrally into Fibas, in towards Lozano, but Nacho gets there. And here come the Galacticos again. Dybala on the ball, manages to beat his man. He's free to put a cross in. Sanchez is there. And I definitely spoke too soon. Football managers heard me. And uh, maybe it means we're going to win the next game against Bilbao. But I did want to beat Madrid today. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Fibas are looking a little bit tired actually out there. Uh, so we're going to swap him and Sansa over. And Burdica is going to come on the pitch. And you guy that we've got on loan. And I, I might make another change in another five minutes or so. I'm hesitant to make major changes because we're playing pretty well out there right now and, and the players seem to be pretty focused and know what they're doing right now. So changes might affect that quite a bit. I don't know. I don't want to make anything rash. But uh, we're kind of, we are we lost the ball there and here come Real Madrid once again. Dybala through once again into Sanchez. And I definitely spoke too soon, didn't I? Definitely. I mean, it was nice to be in Madrid for a little while. It was nice to be beating them for a little while, I suppose. Uh, Adzic is going to come off. Uh, does Rollheiser like playing there? Not especially. Does the Thomas like to play there? A little bit more. So we'll leave the Thomas there for now on that left-hand side, I think. However, Madrid are coming forward again in numbers. Pogba's been put through. Burke makes a, a last-ditch clearance, but only as far as Carvajal, who puts it back into Dybala. Sanchez does get his hat-trick, and that is game over beyond all doubt now. And there we go. That is it. Madrid 3 Oviedo won. We, we had a decent first half. Um, in fact, we played very well up to the 69th minute. And then it all started to fall apart a little bit. But I, I can't fault the performance of the boys there. Uh, unlucky boys. Would have nice to have won there, but it wasn't to be. They all looked to gain confidence from that, which is good. We need that confidence going into this cup game against Bilbao. And because I rambled on so much uh, at the start of the episode, I think we're going to go straight to that game. So uh, I'll see you at the game. Well, to be fair, Everton offering 6.5 million for Feebas, although he's worth nearly 10. So actually, that's an absolutely ridiculous offer. Uh, and Inter Milan literally are making bids daily uh, for Ator now, which is a little bit annoying. We'll reject that, but look there. Inter make a bid for Ator. Inter make Ator offer. The, in fact, that was in the same day. They made it in the morning. There you go, in the afternoon. I mean, you can see the amount of offers. If I, if I just type in Ator up there, you can see the amount of offers. Inter, Inter, Vigo, Vigo, Vigo. Uh, someone on loan, someone on loan, Vigo, Vigo, Inter, Inter. It's it is ridiculous. Oh, okay, then. They've, they've bid 7.25, which is minimum fee release clause for fee. Oh, no. I mean, it's a lot of profit we've made off him, but he is literally our star player. So we've got to offer him a new contract now. Um, fin Finalise those promises, negotiate his contract. 76 grand a week. 76 grand a week. Well, I think I think we're going to be losing Feebas then, uh, because the the max we can give him is thirty seven. Apparently, um, oh, I mean that's. Let's just suggest that. No. Okay. See you later, Feebas. See you later. On oh, Inter now just offered eight or a contract out of no. We, we look. We offered him a contract as well. Um, I mean, I swear to God, if they both leave. I'm, I'm temp I'm, it's, the rage quitting temptation is so, so much. I mean, it's good news for Sunset because it means he'll become the designated playmaker in the entire side. Um, it, then it then reduces the number of midfielders we've got again because, again, we've got two injured for quite a long time. Um, it means that the new loan sign we've got is probably going to get a first starting place now, I think. Um, between him and Ruiz, I'd imagine. Okay, well, Ator signed his new contract with these, not going to Inter Milan. That's good. He's now got a £1.7 million release fee clause. On the downside, though, it looks like Feebas has moved to Everton for £7.25 million, uh, on £56,000 a week. As a rotation, he's not going to get game time, is he? He's not even going to get game time. That's actually so annoying. And the thing I hate about the Spanish league is everyone has to have a minimum fee release clause. And whilst that is probably good for you poaching players... It means that other teams can poach my players. 
I mean, in that situation, they've gone for much cheaper than they would have otherwise gotten for. Like, if you had no minimum fee release clause, we could have negotiated that up to, like, 20 million. But no, 7.25. Oh, I forgot he was our bloody captain as well. I forgot he was our bloody captain as well. Right. Um, well, David Cameron is, is, is vice captain. So, David Cameron is now the illustrious leader of Oviedo. Um, and I suppose, um, who, who do we want as... As vice, I'm not gonna lie. Dorsch looks pretty decent as a vice captain, but I don't. Know, I mean, Cantel's not really gonna play. Dorsch is probably gonna play more than him now, so it's gonna be David Cameron and Dorsch as vice. We'll do that. LA Galaxy now, literally, why? Why so many transfer windows still open? Are shut ages ago, and yet other clubs are still allowed to bid for our players and things like that. Um, he's not gonna go to LA Galaxy. That's not enough money, and I need him as backup now. Um, especially because a few players have left. Right, for the lineup then, uh, we're going to keep it the same as Real Madrid, although Sunset now moves over to be our, our playmaker player, and I guess Burdica is going to come in, um, and we haven't really got another central midfielder that we can put on the bench, which is a little bit worrying uh, and frustrating. So I guess I guess what we have to do is just put like Cantel on the bench then. Um, <laughs> It's only Gene Ruiz now that we've got available to sort of swap in around the midfield. Uh, as soon as these two are back, it'll be okay. But, I mean, Masovic isn't going to be back this season. He's not going to be back this season. And Fernandez, and he's still got another two months. So, we're a little bit stuck in midfield right now. We have to bring someone up from the youth squad, I think. Right, well, kickoff is upon us. Um, so much we're going straight to this match from the last one. But a lot of stuff happened that I had to tell you about, basically. So, um, this episode, either going to be really long or really cut up and actually I can guarantee you it's going to be really cut up and still really long as well so enjoy right cup action we lost the Bilbao last season in the cup hopefully today we can get revenge for that and uh, and do pretty well we came pretty close last season on away goals um, it was like until like they scored one in like the 80, 88th minute or something really really ridiculous and they managed to just sneak it in the end but um, hopefully today we can we can turn out and uh, put in a good performance. I think the reason we managed to do so well in the Cups as well, it's very similar to how we used to do quite well with Lincoln. It's because we always put a full-strength lineup out, and uh, the other teams don't. Which, I mean, is kind of understandable maybe, but when you get to this stage of the competition, you would have thought that they would do. But um, a lot of the time, I don't think they seem to. Um, but, you know, we can do... I mean, look at the numbers of Bill Bauer. There's no one who's... I mean, you can't see it right now, but a lot of them don't have, like, number one, number two, number three. It's not like the first team numbers, if you know what I mean. They're all like 30 or 30, like 30, 12, 17, 26, things like that. As Sunset has scored a goal from open play there, assisted by Salai, scoring from the edge of the area. Pretty acute angle that as well. Managed to beat the goalkeeper at the near post. But it puts us one up in this cup tie, which is pretty good. Uh, of course, away goals do count in the Spanish Cup. So we need to limit the amount of chances that Bilbao gets. Okay, let's li let's limit them to no more goals then. I literally think football manager listens to me because there are so many occasions where I say, let's not concede. And as soon as I say that, as I'm saying that, they score the goal. Barcelona though, absolutely thrashing at Real Madrid right now, 3-0. So it looks like they're going to the final. Um, hopefully we will as well. I mean, we probably won't beat Barcelona, but Barcelona top of the table, Real Madrid second in the table. They're both getting Champions League. If we get to the final, if we lose it, does that mean we get it or does it mean it goes to the next best place team in the league, like seventh place? That's what I want to know. Penalty now for Bilbao. A free kick just came in and there was a foul in there apparently. So another another chance of Bilbao to score. Berke Yerza has got a fairly decent record of saving penalties. Not today though. We've been in this situation before last season against Bilbao. We were, we were behind uh, and then we came back in the second leg and then eventually lost on away no we didn't lose on away goals we lost the overall didn't we? we we nearly won on away goals didn't we but uh you know there's still 45 minutes to go a lot can happen in a football game fingers crossed we just do our best i've got to say though uh 1100 away fans that's probably one of the biggest away fans uh attendance that i've seen in spain so fair play to oviedo fatal there that's good stuff from you i mean nothing's happened in the second half so far so substitutes need to be made um and you know what Cantel's going to come on for Adzic. I've got it. Cantel, come on there on that uh, left hand side. Uh, De Thomas is going to come on for Lozano uh, if he wants to come on the pitch, of course. And actually, I'm very tempted to bring uh, Rolheiser on for Salai. And you know what? We're going to do it all three at the same time. 
Uh, inside forward, please, though. Uh, that would be quite nice. Inside forward on support. Please, now, that new front three, be magical. I mean, this Barcelona-Real Madrid game looked good, didn't it? 6-2 right now. I mean... Nothing's happened in the second half for us. I wish I was. I was wish I was at the uh, the Barca Real Madrid game right now. Uh, let's go a bit more attacking as well. Maybe that make make a difference. A bit more fluid. Ten minutes left. It's not the end of the world. It's only the first leg, of course, but it does give us a big challenge and a big hill to climb in the second leg away from home. However, we did beat them four two away from home in the league a few games ago. So I've, I've kind of got a bit of faith from that game. I mean, I, I praised you. I praised you guys at the start of the episode for bringing the the winning feeling back to Oviedo. Today, we've lost both games. So, I mean, they were tough games, tough games. Uh, but it's your fault, though. That's kind of what I'm saying right now. So, a 2-1 loss there in the first leg. But, of course, not the end of the world. We've got the second leg coming up in a couple of days' time. Uh, so, I think next episode, we'll do the Bilbao game and Cadiz, I reckon. Because they're bottom of the table. That, that surely means a win, you'd, you'd, you'd hope. So, I need to go away and think about the the squad a little bit. Because it is a little bit... Out of, out of kilter right now with a few players leaving and a few players joining. We need to sort things out just a little bit, but um, I, I, I'm pretty confident we can turn these results back around. We can get back to winning ways, uh, start to push ourselves up the table a little bit more. Top half will be lovely, uh, but of course, we'll see what actually happens. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have done, make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And I will see you next time for some more Real Deal action.